Welcome to the Outer Red Hands. I'm Jeremy. And it's just me. So this is a kind of special holiday unboxing because everyone's busy with their holiday activities and family, family plans. So it's just me here. But something interesting showed up for uh, just after Christmas. Uh, something that was supposed to come last Christmas. This is the uh, new weird game, uh, weird miniatures game the company that does Malifaux, this is their kind of larger scale tactical army game, The Other Side. And this is the uh, box that arrived. So let's take a look and see what's inside. As you can see right now, there's a lot of crush damage. So the box itself is not that full or it just wasn't packed very well. So let's see how it goes. Uh, hopefully we can get a, uh, a good overhead view as well. So here we go. All right, so there already is some miniature goodness. So uh, I backed the Commander Pledge, but I believe it was the Dual Commander Pledge, because if you remember Nick, who we did the uh, Malifaux review with, or the, yeah, the Malifaux review with, Nick went in on this with me. So we did two armies, uh, two forces. So we have the Cult of the Burning Man, Cult of the Burning Man, and the Abyssinian. So he went Abyssinian and I went Cult of the Burning Man. In Malifaux, I only played the Guild. I wasn't really excited. I liked Abyssinia. Um, I wasn't really excited about the, um, I'm forgetting the, the kind of British forces, a very shooty British forces army. They looked much more like Guild, but the miniatures were a little bit boring. And uh, these, uh, the Cult of the Burning Man looked amazing. So I went with those guys. And uh, so here we have some of our, I guess kind of our HQs. This is the commander. So we have the, the Lord of Steel, a rail gunner, and then my breechling. And as you can see, the breechling does not have any plastic wrap on it. I heard that there were a few problems. The reason things are so late is uh, I think they were having trouble with their distributors in both Canada and uh, internationally. I received a notification that I had a uh, tracking number in November, beginning of November, but things didn't show up until uh, Christmas time. So a little bit of a delay. So I'm gonna take things out one at a time. So Breachlings, Lord of Steel, the Rail Gunner, and here's the rule book. So a lot of the basic things, there's going to be two of everything. So here's one rule book and here's another without plastic on it. So we have uh, yeah, the two core rule books and we'll take a closer look at everything later. A lot of peanuts and then more, the miniatures. So here's Fenton Brahms, the commander for the other side. So I've got a lot of cultists and a lot of uh, insane teleporting monsters on my side. And I think the, the thing that they said caused the largest delay, oh, another box without any plastic on it. This is scary. Um, it caused another delay is these are all pre-assembled miniatures. So there's no sprues inside these boxes. These are like ready to play out of the box. And because it's a larger, uh, a larger scale army, there's bases and then there's larger bases in which you set the units to create a, a team. And uh, so there's a lot more that they had to kind of come up with that they hadn't done before. And everything is pre-assembled. So I think there was some, a little bit of difficulty kind of getting that all to work out. So, sorry, so that was the Doom Seekers. And I'll give you a quick peek in here. I'll show you what I mean. See, everything is pre-assembled and there's bases in there and everything has tokens and cards and it's a really, uh, really nice looking game. So those are my Doom Seekers. Here's another rail gunner for Nick. And, oh, the bigger forces boxes feel like they're going to be... I don't know if, how gracefully I can do this. So there's going to be peanuts everywhere at some point here. All right. Okay, here we go. So here's the allegiance box. So we've got two allegiance boxes, two rule books, and then two sets of tokens and, and I believe, uh, fate decks and all that good stuff. Oh, I'm, the camera is this way. So here's the allegiance box uh, for Nyx Abyssinia. So we've got 28... Uh, pre-assembled minis inside, tactical tokens. Oh, the fate deck is in this box. Bases, stat cards, and a measuring tape. So this is kind of your starter set for your allegiance, and I guess everything is in there. So there's no plastic on this either, and it's you know kind of hanging open a little bit, so I hope, uh, I hope everything that's supposed to be in there is in there. There's tape that has failed <laughs> completely. So I'll set things aside. So I won't unbox any of the Abyssinia. Uh, I'll let 
Nick do that at his uh, at his own <laughs> time. And uh, I'll just we'll just take a look at Burning Man. So my Burning Man forces. I'll pull pull everything out so you can see the miniatures. Ah, so this isn't in plastic either, and it's barely taped. It's kind of very amateur show kind of taped. I don't know if you can see. Let's see here. Yeah, it's not like a machine sealed. It's just hand scotch tape. And the box is bulging a little bit, so maybe things are kind of coming out of there. Coming out of their places in the, uh, the tray in there. But as you can see again, so there's 25 as opposed to 28. So there's 25 pre-assembled and then the tape bases and tokens and everything. So here is Cult of the Burning Man. Okay. So those are two Allegiance boxes. We saw the two rule books, some of the bigger, oh, and here's some larger. They have Titans, kind of a large, large scale, uh, large scale miniatures. And as you can see by the box, if it's anywhere near this size, they're huge. The scale on these is, is gigantic. I think the bases are like a hundred millimeter. They're pretty big. So here's uh, the Abyssinia's Dreadnought, which is, looks like a, a crazy steampunk machine. Oh, yeah, I guess I, geez, yeah, none of these boxes are holding together at all, and they're actually kind of damaged. And I'm sure the miniatures are fine, but if you're trying to collect these and keep them nice and pristine in the boxes, you've already got a lot of corner damage and everything. So there's the Titan. Not so. We have one pre-assembled uh, mini with the base and the stat cards. Sorry, let me uh, just go back and show you the backs. Oh, if I can keep these boxes together, they're falling apart. Yeah, here we go. So let's go back to the Abyssinia Allegiance box. So here's what we've got inside. We've got one sculpt of the prince. We've got five sculpts of crow runners, but nine minis altogether. So we've got some duplicates, and then five sculpts of the. Uh, Mihal Safari, and they are five sculpts, but 18 mini. So we've got about three, sometimes four of each of those. So, and as you can see, the other side is a streamlined game that provides exciting tactical experience. So it's played on a six by four with scattered light terrain and uh, a lot of units on big bases. So there's Avicinia Allegiance box. And let's take a quick look at the Cult of the Burning Man Allegiance box, the back of the box. So here's the leader, Adadeus, and the warped. So there's one of him, and then there's nine sculpts, 18 me. So two of each of the warped. So all kinds of deformed and taken over. Uh, it looks like civilians. So it looks like, you know, denizens of Malifaux that have been occupied or, or uh, possessed by this, uh, by this cult. And then stocking portals. So I've got uh, six, and there's three different sculpts. So that's nice. There's a variety of sculpts. You're not looking at identical. Identical miniatures. What else here? Okay, we've got the Guild Envoy. So I think this was with a Kickstarter, um, a Kickstarter stretch goal. So we have a guild, and I think there are rules for actually adding uh, some guild. And the, the, the storyline is that actually everybody that's involved in this war on the other side of the portal, not in Malifaux itself, on the other side of the portal. So Malifaux is kind of invading the world, and they gave us some characters that. Uh, kind of included in that narrative. So there's a a guild envoy. And oh here's my big bad Gorich, the insanely yeah, you can see from here the very dragon like or hydro like. Oh wow that's really crushed. Okay so this is the first big box with plastic on it, but nonetheless it's crushed and actually the plastic has yeah. <laughs> some styrofoam inside of it, but here you can see him and all of his glory. So one giant pre-assembled titan. Yeah, they're calling these titans. So here he is with his multiple heads. And uh, yeah, so we'll take a look at this guy and see what he looks like and how well uh, pre-assembled he is, but huge, huge scale. All right, and then we've got a Command Fate deck. So I guess we get decks in the, um, the Allegiance boxes themselves and then maybe some Special? I'll have to take a look. We'll, we'll take a look and see. But some special uh, special decks or additional decks. And here's the Court of Two. There's another faction, uh, which is kind of like the um, Ever... I'm, I'm forgetting. The, it's similar to uh, one of the existing factions, but the uh, uh, Cult of Two will allows you to include the uh, Neverborn, I believe, in there. So there's one of those minis included. 
our command deck and some more fun. So here's the the Sotho Cavalry, so more Abyssinia. So we've got six cavalry. Wow, these guys are nice. Yeah, they, they do nice uh, mounted mounted characters. So six pre-assembled and the stat cards. For, so Nick will have cavalry for his Abyssinia. So we've got machines and horses. So that's interesting. There we go, another breech link for me. And again, no plastic on the box. So there's the breach thing. I guess we didn't take a look at that before, but the breach things are formed through the magic that exists between dimensions with no discernible anatomy to speak of. Wow. On the tabletop, breach things serve as fodder for enemy attacks and as a mean of cycling through the Colt's deck. So they give you card draw and uh, probably hang your opponents up. Uh oh. What else we got going here? All right, a raving madman, which must be Cult of the Burning Man. The Raving Madman, an adjunct model. So I guess there's commanders, adjuncts, and then infantry. So on the tabletop, the Raving Madman can prevent opponents from using shaken to from losing using shaken tokens that the cult intends to use for its own purposes. So if you know Malifaux at all, you know there's there's tokens and conditions that can be put on characters and use. Oh, here's some nice looking tokens. So I hope we have two of everything. We should. It's a double. It was the dual commander. So. So as you can see, here's some shaken tokens and tactics cards, reinforcements. Yeah, so this also has a reinforcements mechanic. Yeah, it looks like we've got two sides of these. A reinforcements uh, mechanic that will um, uh, allow you to keep bringing units into play. So it's a very objective base game, at least this. OK, <laughs> at least the skirmish game is. Here's another side, tape measure. So maybe this is similar to what's in the Allegiance boxes. A little teeny tiny tape measure, which Hopefully, it looks like it's actually might be a little bit better than the one that was included with the Malifaux starter box, which is like a fabric tape measure, and it was very, very, very cheaply made. Here's the adjunct model for Abyssinia, the engineer. So on the tabletop, the engineer provides their company with an easy way to gain advantage over their opponent. They also possess a solid range of attacks, makes them useful in just about any squad. It's a nice looking model. So yeah, that kind of armor, there's some technology and, uh, uh, but also some old school, you know, there's, there's horse cavalry. So uh, an interesting mix of, uh, of technology and traditional armies. Another command deck. So hopefully these are the special, a special version or just an additional set. It doesn't say specifically what these guys are. So maybe these are a generic command a fate deck and inside they're more themed. Oh, sorry, let me stand up and take a look. Another tape measure with the other side logo on it. We'll see how those are looking. And that is, oh, one more, oh, good, good, good. We got two packs of tokens. I was worried we'd have to split tokens, so there we go. We got two packs of tokens, two tape measures, two decks, and two rule books. And that is all. Okay, so let's, I guess, take a look at some of these things on camera, starting with Oh, a little Abyssinia stack here, starting with a styrofoam covered rule book. How does that look? So there is the rule book, a nice thick tome there. And if it's anything like their other books, I guess a lot of their other books are, are uh, soft back, soft cover. So this is nice, a nice hardcover book. And you've got the introduction and the game rules and then all of the uh, kind of lore and stats, you know, kind of unit descriptions for all of the armies. Yeah, really, really nice. Nice thick pages and nice kind of satin finish, as you can see, not too glossy. Wow, really, really nice. I'll just give you a quick flip through here. And also their, their art is always top notch. They have a really nice digital art style, which, uh, yeah, it looks great. So they give you the, the strategies that are then on cards and, and showing you all the units. So you can read through the stats, and that's nice in the main book, especially with the kind of beginning set of units, you can see what your opponent has and what kind of abilities they have, so you know what you're up against. That's a really nice thing to be able to see. Instead of having to buy separate you know, codexes like some other miniatures games to know what you're dealing with, a lot of the basic characters, and especially the leaders and uh, uh, leaders and support are all in here so you can see exactly what their abilities are and what what you're dealing with so yeah a really nice really nice uh, quality book yeah that's a big one so beautiful so that is the core rules and the nice thing 
too, is you're not, once you've learned the basic mechanics of the game, you're not referring to the rules that often because everything is, is basically on your cards. So that's nice. All right, let's take a look at one of these tape measures and hope that we're dealing with some of that off of there. Hope we're dealing with something a little bit nicer. Oh yeah, oh, it's metal, good. A metal tape measure in both inches and centimeters. Wow, and it's got a lock on it too. I think the uh, the fabric one had a lock on it too, but that that was a pretty that was a pretty weak uh, weak tool. So this looks like a little knockoff Black and Decker uh, tape measure, and with a key key ring on it. So that'd be a bit nicer than uh, what they had before in their uh, last starter deck. There is one of the command decks. So we'll take a look and see what these are first, and then we will uh, open up open up the uh, decks that are in those starter boxes so much. Okay, we'll take a look at these later. So here's the Command Fate deck. For So it's got the same suits as Malifaux. Basically, I think a lot of those mechanics are similar. So rams, crows, masks, and tomes. And so that would probably mean you could also use these decks for Malifaux. Oh yeah, very similar. Yeah, very nice. There's Abyssinia. All right, there's, looks like the Gibbering Horde. Another one of the factions. Wow, these are really nice. So there's art on every card instead of just having them like playing cards. And here's the, um, the British forces. I'm forgetting the Imperial forces. I'm forgetting what they're called. And this looks like Cult of the Burning Man with all these heretical deformed people. Yeah, those are nice. Wow, art on every single card. So all the four factions. Ooh, 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 look at that. A little metallic spoil stamp on the back there with the logo. Those are beautiful. Wow. Really nice. So this is like, looks like their standard command deck. And look at all that art. So if you know anything about their, their previous decks, they don't have uh, only the face cards. Or I guess, no, starting with 10. I think 10, 11, 12, 13 have... Uh, have the art themselves, have the uh, art and everything else. So here's our red and black jokers. And there's no instructions. Uh, most of the other decks have instructions like what that means um, when you draw those, but those are, yeah, great. Really beautiful art and really nice foil stamping on the back. That's a lot of uh, nice detail. So that is your command deck. And we'll see if we, in fact, have one in our allegiance box or not. And here is the tokens. These are look like nice acrylic tokens, and they may actually give you cardboard or something inside. If they don't, I hopefully we have a big. So these are just looks like they're stuck on their sheet. Wow, really nice. Yeah, two sided. So they're they're thick acrylic. What is that like five mil acrylic? Really nice printing. Everything is registered real nice, nice and straight, and yeah, beautiful. So those are the, uh, there's one of the tactics tokens. So each one of us has a set of these. So it looks like we've got, what is that, 25? Yeah, a set of 25 tokens with our, our different uh, statuses. Uh, so we've got pinned, inspired. Oh, that's an interesting mechanic. Yeah, you have an inspired condition that kind of changes your stats. Uh, reinforcement, shaken, and the tactics tokens. Wow, those are really nice. Those will be really fun to play with. I took some of the... Uh, Wow. Yeah, those are nice. Very well done. Okay. So, let's take a look at the miniatures now. So maybe we'll save these guys. So how about we start with the open breechling, so I don't have to pull on any plastic anymore. Alright, so, so the breechling is just this big, deformed nightmare that uh, I used to harass. Oh, and here's the card for it. So each one of them has a card, like in the previous game. So, ooh, but that got a little messed up being free floating in the box. So you can see it got creased at some point. So it's got a nice crease on it. But um, so there's the stats and the abilities. So you usually have these cards laid out in front of you so you can easily uh, reference them. See so what's going on. And yeah, decent quality. They're nice. They're nice heavy quality. There's no linen finish or anything, but they're nice colorful printed quality. And let's actually take a look. So there's the tray with the miniature and the tokens in it. Let's see. So 
sorry about that. Noise. Let's see. Wow. Nice. Wow, so as you can see, I'm not sure if that's reading on camera, but you've got a bit of a glossy, it's a, little, a bit shinier and a little softer, so a little bit waxy the plastic feels, but it's pre-assembled. I mean, there is nothing you have to do with this miniature. So a little bit flexible, which is nice. That means nothing. none of this is snapped off. If it were, were resin or more brittle or PVC, some of this could have gotten snapped off in the production process. So yeah, everything is, uh, is nice so there's my breechling and here's the base that they supplied looks like a 40 millimeter base with a nice lip on it so that's him on his base and then they also give you these tokens so these are cardboard so unlike those nice uh, acrylic we were just looking at here are some very thick though. They're very nice thick and, and pre-punched, so they're not on a card you have to punch out. Uh, cardboard one-sided cardboard tokens. But uh, yeah, that's nice. So this is what you get for just one, for one unit. They give you four tokens, which may be for reinforcements. Yeah, I'm curious, the mechanic for tokens and the card and then the miniature itself. Yeah, it fits, yeah, pretty well. Look, those little boxes look too Excessive, but no sprue, all pre-assembled. So let's put him aside and keep opening. So we'll save Nyx over here, so he'll have a chance to uh, get those. So I've got another breechling, so, oh, and another unwrapped breechling. So more of the same. We're gonna see exactly what was in there. And then we have Fenton Brahms, our leader, her commander, and uh, so here's one of our commanders, and let's take a look. It's going to be real similar to what we we're already seeing here. But this was nicely wrapped, and it's in really good condition. The box itself is in good condition. So it looks like they may just have had problems. Oh, and the card, unlike my open one, the card is actually in plastic and in great condition, no damage. But no tokens. Yeah, so I guess maybe these are respawning. If this is a commander, he's not going to you know, respawn or reinforce, so... You just get him and the base. And his, oh wow, but nice detail. Yeah, definitely doesn't look like anything was lost in the, um, the process, their new process. Because the, uh, the quality is still there and uh, it's just less, much less brittle plastic and got a little bit of a shine to it. So we're gonna have to be careful about how we prime it perhaps. I'm gonna have to look and see like what will work best. And that's a big, what, 32 millimeter base? 32, 35 maybe? But yeah, so he needs glued on that. But yeah, those are nice. And so these seat into, we might see those in the Allegiance box as larger bases. But here's his card and the miniature. Yeah, and, and more human scale. There's, it's a 32, yeah, or 20, sorry, 28 millimeter game, but. Um, the humans are human size, so you've got you know thin wrists and ankles, and they're they're more of a human scale. It's not a heroic or a, a, a kind of a, a larger, exaggerated, monstrous scale. So the humans are humans look like humans. And now our raving madman, which yeah, so he's got a big spear. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any bending or warping on that spear that we have to fix. And yeah, the box is in pretty good shape, and it was sealed, thankfully. Oh, we have two. An adjunct model, and it doesn't say, it says model singular, but it doesn't say, I'm not sure if this is a mistake or not. I guess we'll see by how many bases the adjuncts are multiple. Oh yeah, maybe it could be three per unit. Oh yeah, I've got three cards, so yeah. So the Raving Madman, there's his three cards, and there's the three models. And three bases, yeah, that was correct. <laughs> yes, three individually packaged bases. But here's our Raving Madman, a little bit needs to be trimmed on that base, and there, so that's like a 25, a little tiny 25 mil base, but uh, yeah, so I'll get some close up, I'll get some photos of these. and. A little bit of warping, but really not bad compared to, yeah, compared to what I've seen 
a lot of the longer spears. And I think, like, for example, his staff, I think, is supposed to be a tree branch, so it's supposed to have a, a warp to it, kind of a, a weird staff shape. But yeah, they're, they're all in pretty good... Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, these are, it's always, spears are just a nightmare. Spears and long-bladed swords are a nightmare for, especially softer plastic. So some hot water might be needed to uh, kind of get that into a straighter shape, because you can see maybe even from that angle, yeah. And actually, it's nice that it goes all the way to the ground, so you can actually use some glue to the base to give you uh, the straighter shape that you need for that. So three raving madmen. So he's a madman, but there's three. So these were the extras that were included. And, oh, here we go. Let's take a look at another, as a, at a bigger unit. Wow, yeah, this was insanely open in the box. And I'm also gonna have to take a look at the, uh, the invoice and make sure everything that was supposed to be in here is in here. Because that was another thing that uh, was a bit of a problem. People were reporting missing or, or broken stuff. So as you can see, there's going to be nine miniatures in here, yeah, with a pretty big variety of uh, pretty big variety of sculpts. Oh, and lots of bases. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you will be able to see. Let's get these guys out of here. A little bit over Mad Men. So let's take a quick look at the back of the box. So the tabletop, the Doom Seekers, bring additional movement tricks for the cult, and uh, they're one of the few cult units that provide area damage. Wow, so they're particularly good against dense troops. So, AoE attacks, and here's their card for this whole group. Nice, yeah, good. The, the, they do such a good job with the, the art on the cards. And here's kind of what I was talking about with the bases. So we've got units, or we've got groups consisting of three, so teams consisting of three, and they standardize their bases, so as you can see, they just, wow, very well. They seat right inside there. Yeah, that's nice. So the models that are here, each will be on their own individual base, and then those bases will be seated into the larger unit base. Wow, yeah, and there's a little bit trimming needed, but yeah, really nice detail. Yeah, a little bit of warping, like on that flaming sword, but hot water and some care will make a difference. That's not bad for that thin, that's a very paper thin dagger. So for example, <laughs> so you're gonna have three models. Wow, yeah, so I'll definitely take some photos of these. These are, these are really nice looking. So you will have three models on each of these bases to comprise the teams and then they'll also oh this is pre-assembled but it's it unassembled oh well so yeah they actually had to be assembled because here is a uh, an arm a hand that's come off of an arm yeah so it's kind of casting this magic and his little arm came off but yeah, not impossible to fix nice yeah, I like some of the uh, poses are really, really nice. Very, de there's a nice, wow, that's a good staff. That's a very, very soft plastic, but that staff is just perfectly straight and will not stand up by itself. But nice staff and some nice chains on this character. Some a flaming book and there's another sort of loose piece. It's on there, but it's, uh, yeah. So looks like only one, one manufacturing error there and here are the tokens ah so these were pre-punched oh they are more of the same the breachling tokens so i guess breachlings is how i'm going to spawn doom seekers so four more breachling tokens in a uh, already in there uh, on a sheet there to be punched out punching out required all right so let's take a look at the allegiance box for cults of the burning man so this is supposed to have 25 miniatures, tactics tokens, a fake deck, bases, stack cards, and a measuring tape. So we already have a measuring tape and tokens, but I'm guessing, there we go. I'm sorry, do seekers, you must move this away. Okay. So we're getting a 
table of the Burning Man. Pretty crowded here. Okay, so this is everything that was in there, and this is, looks like what it was what was causing the, the problem here. This is just in that thinner cardboard box, pretty heavy, and was um, weighting it down. So the whole buck of the box was sagging out and uh, causing that to keep coming apart. Wow. These look great. Yeah, so some duplicates, like, yeah, it looks like two of each sculpt, but wow, really nice. Oh, and a little bit of trouble with the, the staff there on our commander. But wow, these look great. These look great. All right, let's open this up and take a quick look. So here are the unit cards for everybody that's in there. And wow, yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big force. And some, but some of these guys get pretty tiny. Look at that. But as you can see again, so the soft, softer plastic. So you can see that it has some give, which is nice. It's nothing is going to be snapped. And it was put together. There's two halves that were glued together. So pre-assembled and it's, yeah, it's great. They're not, um, they didn't take a huge dive in quality, you know, like a lot of board game uh, miniatures. They just, they lose all their detail and they look like they're melting. You know, they look like they uh, were in the ocean being worn away by salt and sand. And uh, these are really sharp. And re yeah, whoa, there's another little fix. Oh, so the head of my little, uh, nightmare here the little portal has come off so we can see how they're put together so yeah some nice pins and grooves yeah very nice so a little blue put that back together so those are all of the miniatures and here and our cards this guy's here oh nothing's falling off and here's all of the bases wow and look at this so we've got the larger units that didn't open Got the larger units that uh, sit in these bases. Oh, come on. And look at the size of these. So you even have larger bases that the 40 mil sit in. So things get pretty big. So you're moving units together. You know, instead of like on movement trays, you've got things on uh, circular bases. But yeah, everything was machined really well. It, it fits perfectly. There's just uh, there's no error in that. So all of those guys are based and then placed on these larger units and more tokens so we have a portal we have portal tokens objectives and then the cardboard version of what we have as the uh, acrylic version so this is probably what you'll get if you just buy retail and the kickstarter included the um, acrylic which will probably also be available i'm not sure if they were exclusive or not but uh, still the art looks great and they are two-sided so even the cardboard is two-sided that's great okay so here is the fate deck so it's not called a command that was called the command fate deck and this is just called the fate deck and <laughs> and a quick cut oh thank goodness quick cut away uh so here is what okay so here's more so no character no character art just the suit and the number to reinforce you know the number in the corner so there's masks and crows and rams and tomes and then your two jokers so more kind of generic uh, default deck. So this is what you're gonna get in starter and, uh, and obviously no foil stamping on the back. So I guess that was the more exclusive version of the deck and this is the more generic. And, but this can be used for Malifaux as well. I mean, these are same suits and the same uh, numbers. So uh, you can use these for your regular Malifaux games as well. They're nice, yeah, nice looking cards. And but a little bit more themed for the other side, but still. It's the same universe, just other side of the portal. So, wow. Now, the last thing that we've waited all this time for that is pretty much intact is our Titan. So this is the Burning Man's, Cult of the Burning Man's Titan. So let's take a look at the scales. A little crushed box, but take a look at the scale of this guy. Oh, and the base falls down. Okay, so here's his, oh good. Here's his card, the cards that came out of the little section there. But that's a big base. That's as big as the other multi-unit bases, but this is just for one miniature. So here is the Titan. So he occupies this whole base himself, whereas some of these larger models, there's actually three of them on that same base. Oh, and he lost a head. But wow, that's 
that's some weight. <laughs> that's a pretty heavy model. So he'll need his head reattached. But that's a big piece of plastic. Wow. Nice. There's going to be some filling. There's some, yeah, joints. The joints aren't that flush. I don't know if you can see how well you can see. But the joints aren't that flushed. So you're going to have to fill them and kind of smooth them out a little bit because you can see some of the points of attachment. But look at that five-headed beautiful thing. Yeah, so that's my, that'll be my Cult of the Burning Man Titan. And I'm really curious to see the tank, that giant steam tank that uh, Nick has in his side. But wow, really nice. Yeah, I'm very curious about how this material is to work with, how you, you know, how it cleans up if you need to fill it or cut because it's, it's soft. It's very different from anything. It's not quite as, uh, it, it doesn't have that, you know, plastic army man or board game figure quality. It has some really nice detail. If you can see those teeth are very well defined. So not board game. This is definitely, you know, tabletop miniature quality, but a very different material. And I think they experimented with some of their larger models, pre-assembled limited edition with Malifaux. There were a few that were released that used this same technique or use the same material and, and design. So they had already been able to test this, but I guess there was a little bit of difficulty kind of getting this down, but wow, those are big models. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, this is basically what you get if you got a commander, if you got a commander set, this is basically, of course, not including the, uh, the deck, the deck and the tokens that I showed you earlier and the little measuring tape. Oh, but there wasn't a measuring tape in the allegiance box, was there? So I guess those had to go in separately. So we did get a deck. We did not get measuring uh, measuring tape, but we did get tokens. So this would be everything you're looking at if you went in with the command plus the two uh, the two stretch goal characters, one for the guild and one for the. Uh, the Court of Two, so like the Neverborn and Guild characters that can maybe get folded into a game of the other side itself. And yeah, the quality is great. I mean, the, the weight was, was pretty tremendous, but I cannot wait to uh, get everything based and get a little bit of a paint on them and, and try the game out because, uh, you know, I, I think if it's, if it's a tactical strategy game that has the playability and simplicity of Malifaux, it's going to be really fun. It'll be a good time. Uh, and the, um, the the thing that really differentiates it from other miniatures games is the card mechanic, the deck mechanic. We talked about that because um, Malifaux is a skirmish game and this is going to be a little bit more of a strategy game, but you're going to be using instead of dice a deck to you know produce values for any sort of you know flip they call them flips so anytime you're you're confronting or attacking or anything you're flipping to see if you successfully cast successfully attack and uh, you can mitigate the randomness of the deck by you know throwing away lower cards and holding on to cards in between rounds so i'm very curious to see how that works for a strategy game but i have a very ungodly very neverborn looking uh Force, so I can't wait to get these guys painted. They're going to look like they're going to be a lot of fun. There's really great details and a lot of crazy, uh, crazy forms and shapes on these. So yeah, they'll be really fun. So yeah, this is a little bit of a heartbreak. His uh, his scythe-looking staff didn't quite make it into where it was supposed to be, so it got bent pretty hard. Yeah, that's going to be that is not going to be easy to uh, to get nice and straight, but. We will see how successful I am. So there you're, you're sort of looking at, that's the original bending version <laughs> of his staff. So you can, you'll get to see in uh, probably some future videos how well I was able to straighten that out. That was half of a dual commander Kickstarter for the other side. And I guess I'm probably one of the last people to be getting this because it, it came pretty late and is, was pretty abused. So I'm gonna take a look at the invoice and make sure everything that was supposed to be in there was in there, but I think it looks pretty good. It seems pretty complete. And of course they had a lot more units. Um, because this was so delayed, they were constantly offering more and more units that were being added. So you could keep upping your pledge and basically get everything that was made for your force, uh, for your allegiance. Uh, um, but uh, I just kind of stuck with what was the, the basic, what the basic Kickstarter offered because we hadn't played the game yet and we weren't sure, you know, <clears throat> how much we were gonna like it and if it was gonna take off. 
can be as popular as Malifaux, but it looks beautiful. So I, I can't wait to uh, to see how it does. So that is the other side, and uh, um, keep an eye out for some battle reports, hopefully, at least a discussion with Nick, and we'll talk about Abyssinia and what he thinks of the miniatures, and then maybe a little bit of status report and some streaming about how they are to paint and straighten out and all that good stuff. So if you like this video, please share and subscribe to the channel and give us a like <clears throat> to keep things uh, keep things friendly and happy. And uh, if you did pledge for yourself and you went in with the Gibbering Horde or the, which I have not checked, the, the British based, <laughs> the, the London Imperial Forces, the King's Empire. Uh, if you went in with the, uh, the King's Empire, yes, uh, let us know. Uh, what uh, what you thought of the miniatures and what do you think of uh, how they play because you probably have played them already uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you again goodbye <laughs>